This is Laura DeFranco, holistic physical therapist and owner of Brave Healer Productions. I'm excited to bring you my new holistic healing series where you're going to learn from the experts what it means to live fiercely alive, mind, body, and soul. I invite you now to take a breath, relax, and feel the vibe of the words my guest has to share with you today. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. So what if there's something you haven't learned yet about this healing journey that could change everything? Today I am bringing you a few of those somethings. So the uh, author expert healers who are joining me today, they aren't just authors, they are experts in their field and they want to help you understand what's possible in terms of your health, your well-being, and your life. These are three of our amazing authors in the Ultimate Guide to Self-Healing. This is volume three, you guys. Welcome to the show, Susan Gertner, Jen Pacino, and Buddy Makuha. If I butchered your last names, tell me now. Hey, you guys. Hey. <laughs> That's good. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank I, I should have double checked before we started, but you know how that goes. So, um, you guys, <laughs> <laughs> the first book in this series was born back at the beginning of COVID. And I literally woke up one morning and asked a group of my healer friends if they wanted to help me teach the world how to heal at home. And here now, just five months later, I am so proud that to announce that we are about to launch our third volume. And these amazing people are a part of that. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be introducing you to all of these brilliant, wise, heart-centered badasses that said yes to this project. I'm so grateful to you guys that you're here with me today to share yourselves, your businesses, your messages with the world. So today I have Susan Gertner. She is the CEO and founder of When a Woman Starts over a strategic communications firm specializing in women's equality and empowerment. Susan is an author, speaker, and women's equality activist who inspires women to reclaim their equality and never let go. I also have yes. Jen, Jen Casino. <laughs> Am I saying your last name right, Jen? You are. Thanks. Okay, it's not like the Italian version that should be the ch. I don't know. I keep wanting to do that. Jen you're, Casino. You're doing fantastic. <laughs> Good. She's a shamanic practitioner, a healer, a priestess, and a Reiki master. She's a channel with 30 plus years experience sharing spiritual gifts and accumul accumulated wisdom to heal women in profound ways. At Gypsy Moon Incorporated, she shares energy healing and spiritual solutions for life challenges to transform lives. And Buddy Makuha is a force of nature and micro influencer <laughs> in the world of fitness and self empowerment. You got to love the bios, right? I love bio writing. <laughs> he has been motivating people for over two decades with his humor and positive attitude. Currently, he teaches live classes on what is that? We're Cess? Say that for me, buddy. We recess. We, we recess. Re Dot TV. TV, thank you, and is the host of the Buddy Show on Friday nights on Instagram. Dude, we need to tune into that one. I can already tell. You guys, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you, Laura. Excited. Um, so, Buddy, I'm starting with you. Talk about this yoga chapter you wrote and why yoga has been so important to you and your journey. Well, I've been teaching yoga about 20 years, and uh, back in 2013, I. Uh, had a transit, transit ischemic attack, basically a, a mini stroke. And um, I remember just being in the hospital. I was in Hawaii with some friends and had a couple different uh, uh, episodes that happened. And I uh, went to the hospital and they said, you had a stroke. And I went, there's no way. And I remember sitting in the hospital and just thinking, you just have to breathe. And I just remember taking what I've learned in yoga with my breathing and just did that and just kept visualizing healing energy moving through my body saying, I'm going to get through this. And it was tough because there was a moment where I thought I could have died. And what I learned from yoga and just not just the physical practice of yoga, but more importantly, how it trained my mind, how it conditioned me for 
healing on so many levels. That actually came into play when I actually had my stroke. So that's the reason I wrote that chapter. And it was really, really profound, kind of reliving it. And I have to say thank you because it was nice to say, wow, this actually did help. And I'm hoping that it can help other, other people uh, with their life on so many different levels. So, yeah. Thank you so much for mentioning about that writing process. And, and if you don't mind, I'll ask you another question about that. What I know from watching it happen over and over again is that some of the first times that we share our authentic stories, out, I'll say out loud, which means in writing or speaking, it's a healing process for the writer and it's then can be a healing process for the receiver in whatever way you're receiving somebody's story. So was this the first time you had shared that story out loud? Uh, I think sharing it with a large number of people. I'm pretty okay. private as far as, you know, I have very <laughs> close friends. Um, so it wasn't something as far as that event that I actually shared exactly what was happening. I actually had a good friend of mine call me and say, who I, I let, you know, kind of share that story with. And he says, I had no idea that you were so scared that you mm. actually, when you came back, cause I was actually back to teaching when I came back from the stroke two weeks after I had the stroke and I was back to teaching. And, and uh, he says, I had no idea you were so scared. I said, yeah, I, I was basically holding the walls of the yoga studio to make sure I didn't fall over. Mm. And, and I, I had a, you know, process not only sequencing, breathing and knowing what the, what the poses were, but I had to not fall. <laughs> And embarrass myself of like, okay, what am I doing? And it was really, really just a great experience as far as reliving it again, but also sharing that story with other people. Because then for the first time, I think people are going to read it and say, wow, I had no idea. That's what you're going through. And you, I mean, people see me and they think, oh, you're so strong. You can get through anything. But it was, I'm just like everyone else where I'm feeling, I'm scared, I'm nervous. I'm, you know, I'm a student like everyone is still learning about myself. So it was really, really, uh, it was nice to, to have to share it. Yes, definitely. There's such power in sharing our stories like that, even after the fact. Um, oh, I can't say enough about that. We're going to have to have a whole other podcast on that topic. Um, and thank you all for taking on the challenge of telling those authentic stories. But also, you know, it's you all are master teachers. And you do that with your clients one-on-one -on -one all day long. But to say yes to the challenge of writing it in words in a way that the reader actually has a practical experience, that's not easy. And so thank you for saying yes to that challenge. And these gifts are such incredibly um, powerful toolkits and gifts in that way. And you are all so generous in terms of your teaching. So um, thank you for that. So Jen, talk to me about the chapter that you wrote. This is chapter 16, and we're going to be learning about nourishing feminine power and fertility in your chapter. Yes. So my personal story, which I shared there, I have to agree with Buddy. It was very therapeutic to go through and relive that situation. I had a 10-year battle of infertility that was explained as non-explainable. Now try telling that to a control freak. It didn't go over well. I wanted answers and I didn't have any. So I really just went outside the box when modern medicine failed me. And it's what set me on this healer's journey as well. And um, stripping off those layers, going through the writing process was very emotional for me. I've shared my story publicly in circle and circle work with women, but not just as Buddy mentioned, not in this form. And as I was writing the tool, that's what got me, is Ooh. writing the tool for what I wish I would have had, mm. for which I would have had access to when I was in the emotional trenches of it all. And um, I just want to be that light for women to have that. And now also, this is not just for people that are trying to make a baby, although that's what it was for me way back then. When I say fertility now, it's fertility in all forms. So it's if you want to birth the book, if you want to birth the dance or whatever it is you want to bring into form, I've found in my own struggles that we go through the same process. We hold the same stuff in that womb space. So when I'm sharing the energetic womb clearing, it, it is taking out the stuff that's holding us back from whatever it is we want to birth into this world. 
I love that. I, ha I love how you're going to include um, people, I guess, women, but you, you made me think of Buddy here for a minute, um, because all people um, have that uh, ability to birth a new idea into the world or birth. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. I love that you brought, buddy, you are the subject of conversation. <laughs> I love it so much that you said that because men have an energetic womb space, <laughs> just like we do. Mm. And all of us hold our wounds and traumas in that space. So when I do womb healings, it is for both. It, it's clearing away and making room for the new to come through. Nice. You know, essentially all of you are writing chapters and teaching tools of awareness. And that is just what that is. When you can wake somebody up to a new possibility, to a new way of looking at something, to a new way to feel their body, to a new way to notice what they're thinking, believing, and doing with this vessel that they live in, then you are giving them a big opportunity to, to do whatever that healing work is that they need to do on the journey. And so, you know, we're all sharing awareness tools. So I'm going to pop over to Susan and ask her to talk about hers, um, which is definitely a little different than some of the other authors. Susan, you have chapter nine, finding your lost authenticity is what you're going to talk about. Tell us a little bit about that. Chapter nine, uh, it's uh, find your lost authenticity. And uh, my tool is to reclaim your equality. And I'm someone who honestly spent my entire life trying to figure out who I was authentically. And uh, it's, a, it's a common thing among women. And when I look back on my life, I knew at one point in time uh, in my younger years, I was this kind of curious, self-confident. Uh, I was a different type of person uh, in those younger years. And then you hit adolescence and something happens. You're transformed into this less confident person. You're, you know, and I, I spent my life, my adult life saying, who who am I authentically? I'd even hear the word authentic and I'd be intimidated by that word because I never knew who I really was inside. And that's, that's what my chapter is about, how I found this lost authenticity. And I've, I've lived a similar journey. And sometimes I feel like we can pick up on the themes of our life and as we go through the years, we'll see the repeating theme. It'll come up and it'll come up again and it'll come up again. And, you know, when it comes up for the fifth time, you kind of have to like be like, oh, okay, there it is again. Like, you know, what am I going to do this time about it? But that journey for me to, um, and authentic is a sort of a hot topic word right now. And so I want you to talk a little bit more about that word a little bit, but for me, it was just reclaiming the worth. And when I felt worthy, finally, that more than anything gave me the ability to um, be my authentic self. So well, that, that's funny. You mentioned the word worth. And that's, that's an interesting word because what happened, the way this all happened was this past year, I was in a salary negotiation and like, every other woman out there who has experienced increased uh, job responsibility, increased title, but that salary, not so much. And this was the first time I decided, oh no, oh no, I'm going to stick with my salary and stick with my worth. And it was a it was really, really difficult salary negotiation, the back and forth, the back and forth, it was kind of insane. But I remember something happened where I said, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. I can't do inequality. And something just clicked. And I said, oh my God, that's what it is. It's my inequality. I've been living according to society's pressures and expectations of me. Once I found, I, I got rid of the inequality and I talk about that as my tool, my authenticity flowed naturally out of me. It was amazing. It's amazing. And these five, six months since then have been completely different because I reclaimed my 
equality, which I lost from right in that transition period of adolescence. And, uh, you know, you go into society's pressures and, you, and you, you live with this, whether you know you're doing it or not, you're doing it. And it was, when, it was, that, that was the clicking moment for me. So when you say worth, that's really, yes, I can relate to that. Yes, to that, right? So I'm gonna stick with you for a minute and ask you this next question. So all of you in different forms believe in empowering your client and that is why we're writing books for self-healing. It's why we're teaching, especially in this form, so that people understand that they really can have the power to do some of these things on their own. Thank you again for that gift. It's big because um, as, as a practitioner, you could have been taught in many different ways, including that you had the responsibility of fixing other people. And so as I've gone in, along in holistic physical therapy and I've learned from different teachers and mentors, one of the biggest things I've learned is that the most important thing I do is to help people understand uh, how they can help themselves to empower them to connect with their own inner healer, right? So Susan, how, talk about one way you help empower women and connect them with that inner wisdom. Well, uh, I, I am really passionate about uh, women at all ages, at any age, can, can find their, reclaim their equality. But I, women over 50 in particular, I'm really passionate about them because they've gone through this, this experience that I went through for all these decades, you know, just searching, searching, searching. But um, so I am very passionate about that, the, the women over 50. Uh, but my business in particular, um, with communications and with strategic communications, working on women's projects, I'll tell you one area that I've gotten into is working with, there's, there's candidates all across the U.S., female candidates working in national, going for national offices and going for uh, local offices, state offices, and working with these women in particular has been very empowering. And they themselves, they have a mission, they're on a mission, and I just, uh, I've been working with them right now in terms of the communication. So that's, that's something I've really gotten into with my business. Well, I think um, from that aspect, you're making me think of just being able to communicate in general really well, <laughs> no matter who you are, what you're doing, if it's a relationship we're talking about, or if it's uh, something like that, they want to run for an office, you need to be a master communicator. Being a master communicator is so empowering. Yeah. And of course, we all know that that's not always talking. A lot of the times it's listening and really understanding who's standing in front of you, right? Um, oh my gosh, there's another, in these interviews with all y'all, uh, there could be at least 50 other solo podcast topics. and <laughs> That's one of them, communication. Oh my goodness. Um, but he talked to me about how you empower your yoga clients and really get them tuned in with that inner wisdom. Um, I think I use, one thing I use a lot is humor. I, I try to get people to laugh and to, mm -hmm. to make it very lighthearted. Um, what I found with a lot of yoga teachers, it's very serious. It's like, this is a serious practice. We must now do these poses in this order and we must have this alignment. And what I try to do is have it where it's fun, where it's inviting, where it's almost like you're a little kid again, where you say, hey, how can I be in my body and appreciate my body and love my body yeah. and know that it's okay that I'm not perfect, that I can't touch my toes, mm -hmm. I can't do a certain pose. I'm getting excited, I'm sorry, I'm speeding up. But um, <laughs> one of the things I love, I just, I love teaching, I love sharing what I know, I love sharing my knowledge, but I think the biggest thing is just getting people into their bodies and feeling their bodies and accepting who they are. And the biggest thing for me is not only accepting where you are, but where you're going and becoming this new person through this process of just yoga, self-realization and just um, feeling your self-worth. I think it goes back to that worth. We talked about worth. I think that was just struck mm -hmm. a, a, a key word with me of just having people feel worthy that they are okay, that yes, we've been through trauma and drama through our life, but can we take this moment and appreciate it for what it is and know that we're moving to a different place? I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, definitely. You're also making me think of that topic of um, just being grounded and centered in the body itself as a, an anchor 
for whatever else you're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you can have that, even that one simple skill and yoga is just one of the beautiful techniques that does that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love yoga for that. I've been in martial arts for about 14 years and similarly the mind body integration of that art of that practice is what does that for me. Um, it's a pow powerful, powerful tool. Oh my gosh. The addition of humor again, don't get me started on this one because dude, we're all going to die soon. Like, you know, like, can we just have a little bit more fun? Like life is so <laughs> short. Right. And I think I've just gotten to that times a thousand as I've gotten a little bit older. I just want to, you know, smile more at people and kind of give them a goofy face and see if I can get them to laugh, <laughs> you know? I love it. Um, but I appreciate you, buddy, for that piece, too. I think it's so important. Good. Um, I've got a question I'm going to ask all of you at the end of our interview that um, I'll be curious to see how you answer it now that you talked about humor. Um, Jen, talk to me about this connection with, with the inner wisdom and how maybe... Um, you know, how you're doing that for your clients? Oh, there's so many different tools that I use depending on the situation. So if our tool here in this book is more fertility based and listening to inner wisdom to clear the old wounds of the past so that we make our body, our temple more fertile. And again, for whatever they want to birth, right? For me, it was getting knocked up back then, but it's for anything that they want to birth. So we start practicing tools of listening to our authentic wants, needs, and desires and start removing the layers and layers of energetic blockages and emotional traumas out of the way so that we can actually access that information in a way that is tangible. And, um, it's been really fun working with people because humor is a part of my work too, depending on the client. And I've found that there's different ways to have an emotional release. And one is through tears and the other is through laughter. And yes. both are equally as powerful. So we like to have fun over here. And there's different ways to access information. I used to be a professional dance teacher. So I use dance to shake things up sometimes. And it takes the heaviness out of the heavy work. You know, I was a master at um, concealing my emotions when I was going through the infertility struggles. And I try to help people work through that in a fun way, instead of just putting more masks on top of the mask, on top of the mask. Yeah, really, really important. Um, the, the way that you talked about clearing those past wounds like i don't know anyone who really loves to like sign up for that me 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 like let's do all that really impossible work of healing all of that past you know crap the traumas and the layers and you made me feel the heaviness of that but if we can have a conversation about what that is so that people are understanding that what they're feeling has to do with some of that stuff. Because sometimes when you're feeling that physical thing in your body, you just think something's wrong and you need to go to the doctor to have them fix it. And you, you have no idea of the possibility of what you right now are talking about. So how would you put that in a way that our listeners would connect a little bit more with what you're saying? And it's a, that's a challenging question, but yes. talk, talk to me more about it. So when we don't deal with our emotions, and all of us are guilty of it, me included, they get stuffed down, stuffed down, stuffed down, kind of like a beach ball being suppressed down into the water. When we're younger, we can hold it there, hold it there, hold it there, and then all of a sudden, it pops up and hits us in the face, right? But the way it shows up is in these patterns. It shows up in our muscle tissue. It shows up in our moods and so forth. So as a massage therapist, people would come, right? And they have, they come because their lower back keeps hurting. Their lower back keeps hurting, lower back. Nothing happened. Everything is structurally sound. They don't know why they have the, the pain in their back. And it's the emotions in the spiritual body that show up in the physical body. So what I would say to people that are listening, if you've got something that's not making sense with um, 
standard medicine. It's not going away. You can't find a solution. You don't understand it. For me, it was fertility. Okay. My suppressed stuff was sexual trauma. And it was down so deep, I didn't know that it was even buried in there anymore. Hmm. So lifting those things away as you as you strip it away you realize how much weight you've been carrying over the years and that's the biggest thing that i can tell people you get to the point where you don't even know what you're carrying because it becomes the new normal so a lot of times we do the work and they call it work for a reason it, it there is some work to be done but when you're brave and courageous enough to come in and do that and lift it out for me, I felt 10 years younger after I did, my, you know, and again, then you get another 10 years, that inner child wakes up, then you get more humor and all of these diagnoses of anxiety, you start seeing what they were really about and how much you've really been collecting over the years. Yes. I, I don't know how many people that have come through the, um, you know, the physical therapy door have been to five doctors who mm -hmm. will say interesting things, right, to, to the clients about, well, we don't really see anything on these scans or whatever. And actually, you know, that's when you should be really excited that there are no red flags. There's mm -hmm. nothing sinister here. And that um, you know, we can turn around and seek out some holistic help in terms of your healing. And again, you know, what's possible here? Well, it's possible that that could be coming from a whole load of different, you know, reasons that um, aren't scannable on an MRI or a CT scan or any, you know, anything that the Western medical doctors can, can really look at and diagnose. And I think it's important for people to really understand that. And that that's, um, that's what I want to talk about a little bit next. So I'm going to stick with you, Jen, for a second. You know, when you think about a holistic approach, it's important. Why? Why is that important? Why should people start to move toward more holistic practitioners, even in their traditional practitioners, start to ask those questions? For me, I believe wholeheartedly in whole body healing, which we were not raised to understand here. We treat symptoms instead of people. Right. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have experienced this. When I was going through this infertility battle, I felt like a number. Yeah. I didn't have any conversations that were heartfelt. I didn't have any um, connection with my doctor. In fact, I, and I had seven doctors here in the U S I was telling them what they did in sessions instead of the other way around. Mm -hmm. So when we go into this holistic way of being, we're working with the mind, body, and the spirit and the whole body, not just pieces of it. And that to me is the part that has had the biggest significance in my own life and what's put me on this path and why I serve. Um, in this way, because I see the biggest transformations when people are working with all of the bodies. Yes, uh, yes, with an exclamation point to that. Buddy, talk to me about holistic in terms of yoga and all of the things you're doing with your clients. Why does that make a difference in the grand scheme of healing? Well, I think um, holistic healing, I mean, you said it perfectly. It's about the whole body. And I think when we give people tools or ideas or give some people uh, different ways of healing their body or working with their body or feeling their body. I think that's going to help just everyone just have better lives and also helps people have healthier lives. And I think it's an alternative to Western medicine because in Western medicine, it's about, all right, there's something wrong with you. Let's give you some medicine. Let's give you some drugs and then it'll alleviate whatever the problem is. And I think you said it perfectly and alluded to it. The idea of if you've got an issue happening in your body, maybe there's something that you need to look at. Maybe there's something that you need to investigate to go deeper into what's happening and then also recognize that we're all people, but we don't even know half of what's going on in our body. And I think part of this process that I think everyone, all the authors have gone through is looking at what's going on in our life and then how can we share that with other people to say, all right, this has helped me heal my body. Now, what can I do for you that might help you? I think with my yoga, that's what I do. I get people in their bodies teaching about the poses. And it's interesting because when people start to come to yoga on a regular basis and I throw in some spirituality and breathing, but I'm not about, all right, you know, you need to like 
be a vegan and all this. I say, hey, be, come as you are. I always say my class is like a buffet. You eat what you want to eat. If you're getting full, stop eating. But you don't have to eat everything. Eat what you want. And then from there, use the tools that I give you and come around and maybe in, come around in some way, you come back to that spirituality or that, hey, how do I actually feel today? And how can I breathe? And what's happening? And maybe in some level, I'm, I feel more at ease. I feel more relaxed. I feel like I'm actually improving not just my body, but my mind. And I think for me, that's what came about with my doing yoga and training in yoga and breathing. It was just, uh, it's kind of come full circle. So I'm super happy about that. Yeah, you know, so for me, feeling is healing. And in whatever ways you all are helping people feel, that, that's a really important thing. That is the connection to the inner healer, the inner wisdom, the intuition. Uh, when you help people understand the language of their own soul, you're going to help them make clear decisions about their life and where they want to go in it. So um, Susan, I know we talked about this topic in terms of what you do being a harder question to answer, but um, I'm going to just challenge you to uh, answer it anyway, because holistic for you, there, there's definitely a way that you go about this topic of authenticity and worthiness, and you help women feel it they have to be able to feel the loss to find it again. Yep. Right. Yep. So that's how I'm going to tie it in for you. Tell, tell, talk to me more about that. And it's extremely, the end result is extremely empowering and exciting, but women, I, I think step two in my tool is step two is a detox an inequality detox. And it does take, it's a lot of awareness. It's starting to become aware a self-awakening of what's going on around you that you you never knew it was inequality. You never saw it as a gender inequality issue or a woman's right. You, you just assume this is how society works. So you really have to become mindful. You really, really have to become aware. There has to be a super awareness about it. And um, then in step three, when you, I, I say you put on your gender classes, that's where you're, it's just so, naturally uh, that you didn't see before as an inequality issue. So this empowers you to make different choices, different decisions. It allows you to think differently rather than reacting. It's, it's a complete life change. Uh, so I, that's the holistic tie-in right there. Uh, yes, for sure. I like what you, you broke up a little bit when you were talking about the glasses, but I like, uh, I like that way of thinking about how to do this. And when you can help somebody look through a different lens than the one that they've spent their whole lives looking through, that's a game changer, yep. right? No matter actually with all of you, what you're doing, you're offering like, hey, try these ones on just for a moment, you know, just see what happens. And honestly, you know, you can even see it happen in people's eyes when you've offered an idea that they've never thought about yep. before. Um, gosh, that stuff turns me on seriously. Um, so thank you for, uh, you know, for being the kind of person that understands that it's the mindfulness and the awareness that's yeah. going to move people forward in sort of anything that they want to do with their life. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So buddy, I'm going back to you for this one. You know, do you ever have somebody come in and you can really tell that they're losing hope? And what would you say to someone? They've, they've tried everything, kind of last ditch effort, maybe they're arriving at your yoga class. <laughs> what would you say to someone who is starting to lose hope about feeling better? Um, I always say do a little bit every day. So, you know, we're talking about just different things, modalities of holistic health. And I think Try different things, but if you come take my class specifically, and I've told people before, if you can't do the whole class, just do the first 10 minutes and then leave. It's okay, because like I said, take things in, in little bouts that you're comfortable with. I'm not gonna force someone to say the whole hour. Of course, it's nice if you say, well, I'll modify what you need to modify, but um, what I try to tell people is, listen to your body, know that what's happening right now is temporary. Know that 
it's not forever. And I think we get caught up with this idea that if I'm doing something, it's forever. A relationship's forever. My job is forever. This state that I'm in is forever. And I try to teach people to say, hey, if you're doing yoga, we're going to do a pose, but it's not forever. So can you be present? Can you be in the moment and appreciate where you are now and then let that go? And that's why I love Shavasana is my favorite pose because <laughs> yeah. I get to relax. I get to just take it all <laughs> in and go, okay, I'm done. It's a way of completion, but it's also saying, am I happy with, with what's happened? And of course, you know, Shavasana is corpse pose, meaning at the end of your life, mm. are you happy? Can you let go mm. of everything that happened? And can you be open to the next life or the next part of your life? So that's what I try to instill in people. Just it's temporary and yeah. it's okay. Life, life is good. And just take it little steps, little steps. I love that. That's so important sometimes. And I talk about this in terms of mindset and we talk about, you know, with awareness, you get a choice to think and believe in a way that serves you better. But there are a lot of people who struggle to go from the negative thought all the way over to the super happy love uh, joy thought and so those tiny steps in between here and there are really important i mean what if it's just coming to a neutral space just mm -hmm. taking a breath you know you know we don't always have to like try to jump all the way over there to that joy sometimes some days that's impossible right but those tiny steps make a huge difference. And I love that you sh uh, just offer them, if you can do 10 minutes of my class, you're good. <laughs> you know, like if you have to stop at 10, I don't think yeah. I've ever had a yoga instructor say that because sometimes you get in places where they get offended if you don't finish the whole class oh, or yeah. that, you know what I mean? Like that's such a refreshing uh, approach. Yeah, I always tell people, you know, it's, uh, traditionally you want to take the whole class. And of course, you're going to be missing out. But I say, hey, sometimes for, for some people, yoga is very, very intimidating. They're looking at this room full of people um, and they're feeling, I can't touch my toes. And what am I doing? I'm, you know, I'm not in the best shape. You know, look at the person in front of me and we start comparing, you know, other bodies to our own. And we start to think, okay, I can't do this. And this self-talk comes in. So that's why I say, hey, sit, just do 10 minutes. I'm glad you're here. And yeah. then come back, try another five minutes, do 15 minutes next time, but keep coming back. And I think when I offer that to people, people are more um, willing to, to give it a try and say, right, I'm going to say 20 minutes. I say, okay, good. Stay 20 minutes. So that's yeah. huge. Yeah. That's, a, that's huge. And it's a gift that you give people to have permission to do what they can. And yeah. just, uh, you're making me think too, in our volume one book, Miss um, Lori Calvo wrote about just showing up. And like in life, sometimes that's 90% of the battle. Just show up, yeah. <laughs> just do what you can, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, Susan, I'm going to go to you with this question in terms of what you would say to someone who's losing hope, but I'm going to spin this for equality for a moment. You know, here I am and I have, with your help, woken up maybe to an overwhelming realization that it has been this way for however many years of my life. And that might be where I get so overwhelmed by that, that I'm losing hope that anything I could do or say or change would make any difference, right? So maybe that might be a tough question for you, but what would you say to someone who's in that overwhelm and kind of losing hope about anything they, they do mattering? It's, it's hard because I've kind of, I, I, I get where they're at, especially when you're older and you look back and you say, you know, I've spent four decades thinking this certain way, but, um, you know, I can, I can relate to it. I do like the idea of, of them just really focusing on, you know, we, I try to get them back to a point in time in their life when, was there a point in time in their life as a younger child when they really did feel that curiosity, that self-confidence, and, you know, try to identify where that transformation took place because it did exist. And uh, that's the whole reclaiming your equality. It's not find your equality. It's, it's find your authenticity, but your lost authenticity, but it's reclaiming that equality. So it's just one of the tools I think that really exists for women because I, I, I think the, 
the pressures on society, the sexism, the inequality, it's just so systemic and entrenched in our society that you don't even know it's there, you know? And so there's a lot of hope, you know, there's a lot of hope to find that and, and, and see that and change that. I love the tool of helping people go to a moment where they may have had it in the past. It's you're making me think of a tool that we use for the physical body too, because somebody in chronic pain, and we're talking decades sometimes of chronic pain, gets lost and loses all the hope as well. But when you bring them to um, their left big toe and they can find a place in their body that doesn't hurt, then there's something Right. And so just, you're just making me think of that, that tool for that as well. There's always something, there's always something just like there's always something to be grateful for. There's always a way to shift your energy into a higher vibration and start moving yourself toward something that's feeling good, feeling better. Right. So Jen, Talk to me about maybe something that you would say to someone who you realize is losing hope about feeling better. I was in that place and speaking from experience, I can say when you don't give up and you move through those sorrows and that grief, you learn that you were just the wounded healer and you start stepping into your superpowers. And all of my biggest traumas, all of my biggest wounds, um, my defeats, my failures, those things have empowered me to be able to have more compassion, fierce compassion for those I serve. And the biggest thing, I, I always tell people celebrate something every single day. Some days you might be celebrating that you cleaned out the cat box or you got a new pair of socks or I don't know, you got a cup of coffee today without being interrupted. But there's always something to celebrate even when you're in the emotional trenches and the thickness of it. Um, but my biggest wisdom is that all of those ouchy moments are really the things that build us into who we are. Yes, I so agree with that. I resonate with that so deeply. When you're in the moment of tragedy or trauma, it's very, very difficult to see the big picture enough to have the mindset enough to understand this. But the more we have this conversation, the more somebody might be in the middle of something and think, hey, I can't see the big picture right this moment. Let me just not make this mean anything extra right now and i will be here now move through it and who knows right just get getting them into that curiosity i know that that has actually helped me in uh, on some pretty crappy days um but i love that love that perspective so much because later when you can look back and i know each of you has a story about that when you can look back at something and think to yourself ah that made me who i am today mm. And, and that's, a, you talk about moments to celebrate, right? Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. It's a really big deal. Um, okay, you guys, I got, an, I got one last question. It's one of my favorite questions to ask. I'm going to stick with Jen for this one and say, talk, it's so big and vague and I do it on purpose. Talk to me about joy and healing. Oh my gosh. For me, or as I'm serving other people, because to me, I'm going to let you interpret, okay. interpret that. Yes. Ah, joy. <laughs> oh, gosh, you got me on this one. Cause it's such, it's so big. I think there's an abundance of it in everything. If we are willing to see the magic in everyday moments. Mm -hmm. So the one gift that I, my, my son, my son brought this in for me, my eight year old. So I am a success story. I was able to conceive over 35. He came in right before I turned 40. And what he gifted me was huge because he notices everything, every little thing. And he makes magical moments out of rushing to the car to go to Walmart. I mean, he sees, he just sees magic in every little corner and just stopping to see that to me, that is pure joy. And, and mm. just seeing things through the lens with childlike eyes, to me, that is pure joy. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Susan, talk to me about joy and healing. I think I've never been as joyful in my entire life as after losing my job and this whole clicking thing with my authenticity and inequality and starting my own business and going for my passion and going for my purpose. Um, it's it's pure joy every day. It's pure joy waking up and figuring it all out and taking every challenge. I don't, I, I, I just look at challenges as different now. Um, I think I've worked in a number of your workshops actually also, and I, something's not working. I move on to the next thing. It's just a different attitude, a different mindset, but it is pure joy. Not easy. There's challenges, but it's, it's joy. So that's, you know, when Jen said it too, but when we start to look at life's mistakes and failures as stepping stones instead, then the reframe is the game changer. And you don't have to be afraid of failing anymore. You just no. look at it in a completely different way. You know, sometimes people will like do that side look at you like the dog does, you know, like, what? Like, how can you, you know, how can you have that positive attitude when you're going through this massive, whatever it is, right? This failure, this mistake that you made. But man, isn't it a more enjoyable kind of life to have that attitude? Absolutely. Like, what's the alternative? Yep. you know, be miserable. Right? And for women, women in particular get, get stuck in, in these expectations and these lines and these, so it, it was really, really uh, a freedom for me as a woman. That's so. a great word. And yep. that has such a feeling for me. It's like right in the middle of my chest, that freedom. Yep. Um, buddy, talk to me about joy and healing. I was going to say, it's funny to, to have <laughs> all three of us answer this question. I feel like I'm on the Miss Universe pageant. <laughs> and I have to answer, like, who's going to win? Like, oh, no, it's, it's, it's world peace. Um, yes. and I wish I had my earphones and I didn't hear the answer. Says I'm like going, okay, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? I'm all nervous. Um, joy, joy and, what is it? Joy and, what was the other word? Sorry. Healing. Joy and, I, I think for me, joy, what I try to share with other people and what I find, I'll say with, what I find with my own life is finding joy in the simple things. And I think when I find that joy in just, you know, either being with my cat or my cats or, uh, you know, making a cup of tea, cup of tea or something, uh, reading a great book, I think that's healing. I think it's that saying, I'm taking care of myself. I'm taking care of me. And I think when I do that, it helps people around me. And then when I share that idea or share my experience, I think that brings joy to the people to say, oh, wow, that's so simple. I can do that as well. Um, but I think the biggest thing on top of joy for me is happiness and finding that happy. Am I happy? Am I joyful? And when I share that or try to teach people that concept, I think it's, it goes back to just being in the moment, being what's important to me and finding joy in little things. And then when the challenges come, I think you've alluded to that as well, just challenges come in our life. It's, can we find joy in adversity? Can we find maybe spin it, maybe make it a little bit a different mindset in our minds mm -hmm. of, I know it's horrible, but is there some joy in it? What did I learn from it? What can I take away from that experience of if, if it's great or if it's really challenging? And then from there, that kind of says, all right, this is, I want to be in that state of happiness and state of just healing. Um, I think for me, that's what I try to share with, with um, people in my classes and yeah, <laughs> who mm -hmm. I am. I love it. I love that so much. Um, and if we were in the Miss America pageant now, you all would have to do some sort of talent on stage. I don't know. Did you guys need to juggle now or <laughs> sing or I don't know. Um, you guys, thank you so much uh, for what you're doing in the world and for being here to share it with everyone today and for writing these beautiful chapters. Thank you so much for everything that you bring every single day. Um, really, really loved the conversation and I know that people are going to really enjoy it. You guys who are listening and watching, please remember to just take a little scroll down to those show notes because I've linked you up with the author's websites and it's time to go explore, you know, next layer. What is it for you? Did you hear something that changed the way you thought? 
about a particular belief that you had prior to watching this today. So the authors are ready for you. And one other thing I don't want to forget to mention is that every one of our book purchasers in the Ultimate Guide to Self-Healing series has an incredible bonus opportunity to come into a private Facebook group community where all of these amazing authors are hanging out and they'll be doing some free trainings for you. You can come in and ask a question about your chapter. I mean, where do you get to do that with your typical healing book authors, right? And so I think it's an incredible benefit of owning these books. And I thank you all for being there in that group and serving people like you do. So thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Laura. Thank you. This was great. Thank you so much. So y'all, lastly, I want you to just leave with this question. You've heard it at least a couple times today, but I'm going to say it one more time. What if there's something you haven't learned yet that could change everything? So until next time, you guys, take care, be brave. See you Thanks soon. Laura. Bye. Thank you, Laura.